Now, how important are the gaps, the imbalance resting back at an order block or a supply and demand zone? For me, they are extremely important. Um, they signify areas of high probability, okay, because they're areas in which the market has not tested yet. So they are uh, unmitigated areas, order blocks, resting uh, for the market to come back to. You have to understand that when it comes to trading futures or Forex or options, no matter the mar market, the market is going to mirror itself and it has to fill in all the gaps, all the imbalances, either to the upside or downside. And today we've been, you know, we've been bullish since yesterday coming out of London session uh, and still now to, to this current time right now. Uh, but if we look back at the last few days uh, since, you know, primarily uh, Monday, okay, because today's Wednesday, you can see the markets have been making higher highs, higher lows to the upside, breaking structure right here. Broken area structure to the upside right here. And then it started breaking structure back lower just to turn back around and blast back up to the upside, taking out this high right here. So one of the key uh, things that I need to see when I or before I get into a trade and mark up an area or a zone is do we have a area of structure being broken? Number two, is there a gap? resting back at the zone all right is there an imbalance at a order block okay so uh in all these little boxes that you see here these are the areas that were i had marked off or have marked off that i'm interested or possibly interested in but you know uh, it all depends i mean the market hasn't tested you know a couple of these zones i mean here was a zone here here was a zone here this is a demand zone this is an order block this is a demand zone here uh, as well as right here, okay? But this was at Lurin London this morning. So, you know, I have a mark there, but I'm just, I did it to show that it is still a valid or was a valid demand zone. I just didn't take it because I'm not up or during that time frame. But for, for one thing for sure, too, also that you must understand is that I'm not looking to take my trades off of, off of my higher base chart, all right? Now, people always ask me, well, what's wrong with doing that? You know, I see where the market taps those zones. It just takes off in, you know, those directions, okay? Came back, hit this area here, zone pushed up, okay? Uh, we'll trace back here, tap this zone here, and it did reject some, okay? Then push up, pull back, hit this area, blast to the upside. Yes, but the reason why I don't do that because you can possibly incur a lot of drawdown in between before price is actually ready to make its its push. And that could be 20 points. That could be 30 points. It's just depending. You know, you don't want to, especially if you have a small account, be trying to weather that storm because you could blow your account real quick. So that's the purpose and why I move down and scale down to a smaller base chart, like the 24 range, and look for a, uh, you know, an order block, one that is unmitigated, one where there's a gap at, especially if it rests within the zone of my higher base uh, chart, okay, one that I marked off. So, for example, you know, if this was a zone of my higher base chart, I marked up, then when I move down to my lower base chart, I want to see is there a demand zone or an order block resting within this zone, okay? And same at each one of those these areas. Now, the market didn't test this area yet, hasn't tested this area. It's just been pushing to the upside and bullish. Um, Supply and demand or trying to trade surrounding order blocks works best when the market is trending, especially if we get the pullbacks. But if we don't get the pullbacks, then it makes it quite diff difficult, right? So we still have to be in the mind frame that we don't want to force anything, okay? So you have to be very patient and wait for the market to pull back to these key areas to see how they're going to react or how it's going to react then. Now, to just show you what I'm talking about in reference to, you know, we've got a, say, for example, this is the high probability supply area right here, right? Um, and what I'm talking about marking a zone within the the larger uh, higher t higher base chart uh, zone, we want to again identify an order block or a supply area within this box here and mark it off. All right. So I want to show you what I'm talking about in reference to that. But the thing we want to point out is the gap. Is there a gap? Because that is the piece that draws or is the binding glue for the whole strategy. Okay. So. For example here, if I wait patiently for the market to come back here, and this happened at 945, somewhere around there, 950 yesterday, uh, trading session, uh, this was a supply area, okay? So let's go back to the area here because, yes, you may say, well, how is that an area of supply? Why is it? Well, because we're breaking structure to the downside. You can see it right here. Push lower, lower high, broke structure. Push lower, lower high, broke structure. Retracement back to this area of supply right here. 
Now, uh, if I wait for the market to come back to that area and say, and it didn't happen until like 945, then we'll move down to the lower base chart and just to kind of see, is there a zone off the lower base chart inside that zone? All right, so this rectangular uh, box, this larger box is that 120 range zone. Uh, the box below it or slightly on the inside of it, it is still on the inside. Uh, any portion inside the box is considered valid. Okay, so the box that I have drawn here from the left hand side right here, this is a demand, I mean, excuse me, a supply zone inside that higher base 120 uh, supply zone that I showed you. Okay, so the market comes back to it again. Now we're down on the 24 range chart. I marked the zone up off my 24 range chart. So let's go back to it again so you can see um, right here. Larger box 120 range zone. Smaller box, I mark it up. This is a high probability uh, zone on the 24 range. And why is a high probability? We're talking about the gap, right? There's a gap, a small gap from the lower portion of that green candle right here, okay? And then the candle that broke through it and then that, that next candle, it left a small little gap right there. So it's an imbalance resting right there. So I'm going to mark this area up and actually the zone is this right here let's mark it to the t okay small little gap right there now if i go to the right okay we're going to see where the market intercepts or taps into that zone okay all right so when it taps into the zone we're looking for that break and close of a candle right below you get it but then the market swings back so if your stop is resting right here at twenty thousand, say 114 they wicked you out by maybe like a point, okay, a point and a half. This is why I tell people don't place your stop loss, you know, right at the back end of where you enter the market at or, you know, at the break and close of the candle at the back end where the rejection comes from, okay, or, or happens at. Give it a few points right there, okay. So if you got, if your stop was, we're talking about uh, 20,014, maybe give it, you know, 20,017, uh, 16 and a half, something like that, and it never stops you out. Put the tick to tick. They're going to, they know, the market makers know that your, your, your stop is resting right there. They're, they're, they know that there are sell stops resting above this area and they're going to test it just to push lower. So that's why I say in multiple videos about stop placement, where to push posi position your stop at. If you have a small account and you, you say, okay, well, I'm into the trade, but it's coming back on me two candles now, then close the trade. I talk about closing it primarily at, you know, break even or right above or below break even to save yourself from taking a full on stop. OK, so if you would have got in and say you would have got out somewhere like around here, 105, your original entry point was like 103. OK, you took two points loss right there versus it come all the way back on you to 113. All right. So you can close out close to break even as possible if you notice that it's coming back against you. If you trade it with a small uh, small account, all right, to preserve your capital. Um, and then again, you know, as you see what took place here, all they did was come out there, come back up there, trap or um, stop traders out, okay, because they know people have their stops resting right here, and then push the market lower. So let's say you did get your uh, your stop ran right here because you had it resting right there at the back end at 20,014, uh, 114. Then, okay, maybe take a second entry once you see this happening because all they're doing is grabbing liquidity stopping traders out and when they then when you get that second break and close of the candle go short so if you got in here say 107 uh or say possibly uh, 105 somewhere in that area you see that the market ran lower and you could capitalize every bit on picking up your 20 points plus all right so this is what i'm talking about waiting for more confirmation especially where you have two zones marked up the higher base zone off the higher base chart and then a lower base zone off of a lower base chart both of them having a gap back at it because that's going to um, give you confirmation. It's going to add more fuel to uh, the the movement of, you know, when the market gets back to that area. So once you get the rejection, you can get in with a solid confirmation. Because that's what you're looking for as a trader. It's all about confluence and waiting for a solid confirmation to get into a, a setup. The key to all this is, again, being patient. And for all those impulsive traders out there that feel they need to always have to be in a trade, and not waiting for you know the right moment to get into a trade then you're going to more than likely get stopped out tons of times so be patient look for things to unfold you know uh market chops your charts up accordingly but also uh make sure you're getting 
multiple means of confluence that's going to help you when it comes to you know taking trade setups all right now yeah today i mean not a lot of price action i mean we're just chopping we're moving to the upside uh there is a zone resting right here you know in this area here around maybe uh, 350 you know but we have fomc today so i already knew that so these are days like this where we have major impact from news like like today um you know some lots of times the market's either going to chop move sideways or trend in one direction and not pull back to key areas or zones so uh, maybe if you have a second type of strategy that you want to use or you know of that you can trade with then maybe try to you know pull that out the box and, and, and give that a go but for me i'm okay you know i took a nice setup yesterday um and uh it paid off very well for me but you know as far as today I i've been looking at the market and uh, kind of just waiting to see if it's going to pull back to any key areas or, or, or zones. Um, now, this right here uh, at London this morning, you know, again, uh, I'll have to go down and take a look at it right quick. Let me take a look. Forgive me for that. Let's see. Um, all charts. Let's take a look at that one right quick. Because uh, I don't even know if that was, you know happening oh it was okay so yeah i marked it up already so this was a valid area just as well okay so let me show you this too just as well because this is actually a demand setup um we are breaking structure above these areas here we, we broke this major swing right here these highs right here at twenty thousand uh, two sixty eight. 268 so when we broke that area to the upside the market swung back broke more structure made a new high to the upside came back uh this is a valid high probability demand zone where there's a gap resting right here on the higher base chart okay first step then we move down to the lower base chart to see if we can catch a zone on the inside of the larger 120 zone okay and we see one right here it's the first zone as soon as it taps into it right here the small zone right here it taps into it you get the break and close above and you should be able to possibly at least pick up uh uh 20 points here let me see well let's see if you got in here maybe at 22 it goes up to almost 42, almost almost uh, 20 points right there before pulling back. So the key to it is if if you see the market pushing higher, okay, uh, once you get the, I talk about this, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can get the trade for all those that trade maybe, you know, based on uh, risk to reward type, you know, ratios, okay. So maybe you got into a trade and let's see you got the break in and close right above here maybe around 22 um and if you, this is on a, a one to two ratio right here so uh this will bring you up to i think 234 okay you picked up 12 points right there swings back you could possibly pick up more so you could take maybe like most your position off at that one to two or even one to one okay and then allow the last contract to you know do its thing and see how much more you can profit from it if it comes back this is where at that point, once it's hit your one-to-one, -one, then move your stop up to, you know, um, break even. That way you don't take any loss once it hits your one-to-one. -one. Okay. In this case here, hit one to two, then bring your stop up immediately. Okay. So like if we're in the trade here and then the market pushes pushes up and gets all the way up to around about, we got like, like two ticks away from 42 from hitting the 20 point movement. All right. So then it starts to come back, maybe close out right here at 31. Okay. I know at that point uh yeah you're, st you're still locked in almost at like uh 10 points right there okay so um you can get out that way I'll, i talk about in videos about the closure when it starts to come back and you see two two candle closures in this case here red back to the downside bearish then get out the trade and you're still up okay especially if you've already got your your stop um pulled up you know possibly to uh, definitely a break even or higher go ahead and lock in those 10 points once you see it flipping back closing at two candles but this was a high probability setup as well, larger or higher base chart, 120, and then the 24 in the smaller box right here played out well. Okay, but again, uh, this would this played out during the you know close to London session there. So I don't trade that. I'm just it's an example of what we're looking for to unfold when it, it actually happens. But now it's time to be very careful because we do have FOMC today. You know the market opened up and it kind of played around, chop, and then it's blasted to the upside and. You'll see, like I said, you'll see the market doing two things, either moving sideways uh, on days like this, or it's going to move in one particular direction and not pull back. So, you know, sometimes, most times, you know, I'll tend to stay out of the market unless it pulls back to a key uh, or significant zone that I'm that has a gap. 
and that is high probability, then I'm just going to wait it out. Okay, that's the best thing to do. I mean, you'll learn that, per- that patience is a virtue uh, over time with more experience. All right. But outside of that, that's all I want to share with you guys today. So hopefully that the, you know, understanding the idea of um, what is a high probability set- setup, what makes it, it's that gap. All right. And then we allow the strategy, we use the strategy correctly to be able to trade uh, surrounding that. So you know, at these areas where we have order blocks set, these these key areas of supply and demand zones, all right? If you aren't a current subscriber, please take the time to go ahead and sub by clicking on the subscribe button down below. Make sure to turn your, all your post notifications on so you don't miss any of the videos that I post or upload to the channel. For all those that are interested and I get DMs on the day, how can I join the Elite Membership? Okay, it's only $6.99, okay, because you asked that question too, how much is it? The link to it is down below. It's a very, very inexpensive fee or nominal fee for you know all the content and information that you receive. You receive the trade breakdowns. That's like I go into detail. I'm showing you breakdown at the breakdown at the breakdown of trade setups that I've taken. Many of those trades I posted over on Discord, uh, so that you can understand you know the strategy because that's what it encompasses is the strategy as a whole, so that you can grasp an understanding of how the strategy works. Okay, uh, and talking about where to place stop losses, where to place your, your profit target, um, as well as uh, market structure too. So we, we talk about that. It's just a full-on mindset of information that I supply to you in those videos. So if you're interested, but you also receive the great video that I did cover market structure as well as the video playlist. So if you're interested in becoming an elite member, the link is down in the description portion of this video and all videos here in the channel uh, right below the Discord link, Okay. But outside of that, that's all I have for you guys today. If you found some value in the content in which I talked about today, please make sure to drop a like on the video. I appreciate it. Take care and see everyone in the next one. If you're trading, please be safe today.